Welcome to Untold Stories of Innovation, where we amplify untold stories of insight, impact, and innovation. Powered by Untold Content, I'm your host, Katie Trout Taylor. Our guest today is Amanda Cranius. She is executive director at the Blue Manatee Literacy Project. She's also founder of Haverford Ventures, and she's an operations strategy consultant. I'm so grateful to have you on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. So tell me more about what led you to Blue Manatee and what that's all about. Well, that uh, I I think life just let me led me to the Blue Manatee. It was um, it came out of nowhere. I had just finished a consulting job. Um, was actually going to take some time off and um, just chill for a while. <laughs> and, you know, life happens and things change. This opportunity arise. I, I met Kevin, uh, my uh, business partner, who is wonderful. And it just all fell into place rapidly. Like within four weeks, we went from not wow. knowing a bookstore was available to, you know, uh, creating a nonprofit Um so it was it was it was a whirlwind for sure. It still is. <laughs> a year later it still is, but it it's all good things. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, Blue Manatee has such a special place in my heart. <laughs> so for listeners who are not from the Cincinnati area, Blue Manatee is a beloved children's bookstore in the Cincinnati area. And I have three kids, five, <sighs> three, and one in age. So <laughs> we are there a lot and have yeah. uh, just a lot of sweet memories in that space and um, uh, and a, a well-loved brand. And we get that on a daily basis. Like people coming in that with their children and their parents brought them. And um, I mean, it's it started as a blue marble 30 years ago in Oakley and it's, and it's remained there. So um, Kevin and I often, uh, you know, say we don't, we don't like to be called the owners or the founders where we kind of took over stewardship because it really is at this point uh, uh, a, a, bookstore uh, that belongs to the community. So so tell us what led you to purchase and, <laughs> and, uh, and start in this new role. It, um, it was actually a Facebook post that the previous owners put I up. saw that post mm-hmm. too. Yeah. And there were a whole bunch of us that, you know, put our hand up and said, hey, can, can I inquire about this? And, and Dr. Hutton sent out this uh, very good great quirky questionnaire and um, did a wonderful job of, of, you know, having these very serious questions, but also questions that really told him, I guess, uh, more about the person's personality before. What, you know. what were some of those quirky um, questions? Who is your favorite character in Willy Wonka? <laughs> uh, you know, what did you Charlie say? The Chocolate Factory. Um, I picked uh, Grandpa. And, oh, yeah, good answer. Yeah, and it was, um, I don't remember what all my answers were. <laughs> <laughs> it really was rather quick. Um, but it was it was just a really interesting, fun uh, process. And um, I didn't know Kevin before. Uh, Dr. Hutton put us together and said, you know, you guys both have great ideas. Meld them together. The nonprofit was Kevin's idea and when he you know pitched it and was talking about it I was like oh my gosh that's brilliant like of course we, we should do that and um, then for the next we three months we completely you know shut the for-profit down reopened as the nonprofit got the bookstore back open and and last year was just amazing like I keep using that word and it and I I know people use the word amazing all the time but I truly am awestruck that this is where my journey, you know, has taken me and that um, before January of last year, I just had no idea. Yeah. So so at that time, you were in venture, right? Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that, that life and how it sort of prepared you for this moment. I, before uh, this, I was, uh, I got to work with Complete Set, um, which was a Cincinnati startup. Um, great. The best team you can imagine um just a lot of fun it was all about collectibles like so star wars figures i mean um just a geek fest every day it was amazing (laughs) and they had these great um ideas and lots of energy positive energy in the in in the group um so that was that was a wonderful experience so i worked in operations 
with them and um and it, it was it was great to meet meet that group um and i've i've gosh i've done quite a few i've done um a, a lot with nonprofits whether it's volunteer or work you know uh as an a uh, consultant um I love Cincinnati's uh, ability to, you have this startup Cincy ecosystem, right? Like everybody's hashtag startup Cincy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I'm raising my hand because yeah. I, I, I admit to being part of this <laughs> journey. <laughs> and it's, it's, um, it's so wonderful because you have these people that are focused on, you know, entrepreneurial lifestyle and um, building these businesses, whether it's tech or, or, um, uh, uh, HR, whatever it might be, um, but they're taking that and and there's just this underlying current of creating some kind of difference in the community in Cincinnati and almost everything, whether it intentionally uh, has a has a, um, a desire to or not. There's a social impact element to it, yeah, because it all seems of- to be a story about how do we build. Cincinnati? How do we make it better? How do we strengthen um, the great stuff we already have here? So I feel like it's part of our collective DNA. Yeah, we, right. <laughs> um, e- even if our sights are set on scalability and investment mm-hmm. and financial gain, there's I don't know that I can think of a single startup, even you know, tech startup or not, coming out of Cincinnati that hasn't given thought to its impact from Absolutely. a social level on a social level. Absolutely. And th- and I think that's true. You've got, you know, Flywheel Social Enterprise now that is all about social impact and finding companies that are doing great things for whether it's Cincinnati or the world, um, but just working to make uh, uh, businesses that give something back. Um, but I there's there's been so many as a you know as a consultant I'll walk in I'll be like I have no idea <laughs> no like what the heck you should do here, um, and I have never once that I can think of reached out for a hand or for guidance or mentorship and been told you know no I don't have time for that. That's like, right. Yeah. I feel like yeah. it's such a nurturing uh, ecosystem. I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. I. And I want to. I think that's forming us. We're both young women founders, and thank you for saying young, (laughs) (laughs) Young (laughs) youngish. I mean, we're not Gen Z or anything, (laughs) but but yeah, I I think that's forming something in our value system and Mm -hmm. in our hearts as we continue to take on more leadership roles and manage more and hopefully create opportunities for other people to always keep in mind how important it is to mentor. And yeah. if we're open to that and we keep modeling the behaviors we see from other senior, you know, people who are senior to us, I think uh, it's it's so, such an important part of, of nurturing this kind of ecosystem. I, I agree. And I, th- I think the universities being involved, like UC, um, Miami University, uh, I know Northern Kentucky University uh, has, has a great program as well, but having those, uh, like you said, those people and leaders, your professors, the people that know that have lived a life and have this experience and then turning around and not just teaching a class, but actually creating programs outside of, you know, regular uh, curriculum that's, um, you know, grounded in uh, networking and bringing people together. And how do I take these students that are getting ready to go out into the world and have this drive to do something and and get them set up for a win. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I'm seeing a trend. Uh, well, this is not just a Cincinnati trend that's around the nation, but more universities are creating entrepreneurship programs mm-hmm. and trying to help students see it, it, more students are demanding that kind of thing, too. Like They want to be entrepreneurs or think about having their own companies or creating mm-hmm. something new. And I think it's really great that more universities are starting to create programs like that and create relationships with industry and with uh, other, you know, startup founders in order to help students get real world experiences Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. So tell us about the nonprofit and mm-hmm. its mission. Um, so the Blue Manatee Literacy Project is uh, is focused on literacy. <laughs> um, we specifically target children four to eight years of age and uh, communities that 
predominantly uh, people we consider uh, disadvantaged or um, communities that uh, need some assistance. We have 13 partner schools, and uh, the partner schools, the majority of them, the student body is 95% or more on the uh, free or reduced meal plan. Um, the schools tend to not have in-classroom libraries, uh, libraries in general, um, which is, you know, I forever will be such a huge fan of the public library system because for a lot of communities, that's that's a child's access to books. Yes, and, yeah. Um, so the gist of, the, of our program is that for every book you buy through the Blue Manatee, we donate a book to a disadvantaged student. Um, last year, the community uh, responded great. We donated over 15,000 books in nine wow. months. Um, and hopefully this year that number gets flown out of the water. It's such an important part of um, making sure when we're talking about, you know, how we how we tell our story is, you know, Kevin and I, we, we push the paper and, <laughs> you know, pay the bills, that kind of thing. But if uh, we don't have the support of partner organizations of the community, um, the city, like if we don't have that, this doesn't work, right? Like it doesn't work. If people don't buy books, we can't give books because that's how we afford to give the books. Um, so that's been just, you know, such a blessing. It feeds your soul. Like uh, if we can get the word out, if we can continue talking about um, what we can do as a community, as a group, um, what we can do. I I hope and pray that you know we donate thirty thousand books this year. Yeah, or more. <laughs> absolutely. No, I, I think there's such an important lesson to learn from this pivot in mm -hmm. the Blue Manatees identity, and it doesn't matter if you are in a for-profit or in a non-profit where your impact lies, but being able to consider. The power of empathy and mm -hmm. the power of generosity. I, I don't think that you have to be very wealthy to have a generous heart. Right. And absolutely, we're seeing more, even from the for-profit side of innovation, people, consumers in particular, getting behind brands that have a social mission, mm -hmm. and especially that model of a one-for-one one and Tom's Shoes Tom being Shoes, like right. the original, yeah. kind of, well, I don't want to say the original, but like... That's the first one everybody thinks, like, we get, oh, Tom's Shoes, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like Tom's Shoes, yes. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And, and there's another, I think there's many nonprofits, even here in the city, like, um, I love Community Matters, and mm -hmm. they run Absolutely. the sanctuary yes. in, uh, in Lower Price Hill, and when when you hold a business event there or a wedding there, they give one mm -hmm. to someone in the community for free. Yeah. That's amazing. Instead of choosing just sort of the fanciest, mm -hmm. or it's actually pretty fancy. It's very nice. But like <laughs> instead of just choosing something, you know, choosing what you've always chosen, thinking about consumers more and more want to buy from brands that have, uh, that are giving parts of their effort over to specific social causes. And I I do truly believe that that is where we are headed as as um, a people. I, I, I think collectively, no matter what background, where you're from, I do think people are being more aware of um, how their money's spent. It's no secret independent bookstores, they're struggling, right? Like, um, we're in it to win it, all of us. I, we have such a great, um, I, I, we just have this great collective, I guess would be a, appropriate word, um, of independent bookstores. And if you've got Downbound Books, you've got Roebling, you've got, you know, Joseph Beth. And I feel like, um, you know, the, none of those people, okay, maybe Joseph Beth, but none of those people got into it because, oh, I want to make, you know, a ton of money. There's some kind of passion about giving back and about being a gathering place for people to come together and share ideas and, and yes, buy a book, but um, there's so much more to it. And I think that that mentality actually is circulating more and more within uh, just different different groups, different people, and different ways they're coming together. And um, and I love it. There's, you know, we were at a 
Children's Creative Corner. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, down on Clifton Avenue yesterday, and we put a mana tank in. And a mana tank is um, we we put in book shelving, and then we fill the shelves with books, and the kids are uh, free to take the the donated books um, are free to take them home. They can bring them back and exchange them for another one. If the bookshelves start to get empty, we just bring in more books and fill it back up. And I'm standing in this like adorable space. Um, and it just, there's this person, Emily, who's there and she's working this every day. And you know, she's, <laughs> I don't know how much money she makes, but I know nonprofit world. And I know that she's doing this out of, you know, some kind of passion and compassion and just being in that space and these, the space for kids to come in and yes, read a book and, and sit, but it's safe and it's secure. And there's so many people just here in this city that that's what they do every day. Yeah, They just want to give kids like this, you know, great start. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, you've got some hurdles in front of you, but we're here to help. And how can we do that in any way possible? Yeah. Yeah. H- how did you come up with the your launch of a new identity for, for Blue Manatee? Because prior, it was a for-profit mm-hmm. uh, bookstore, right? right? Independent bookstore for profit. And so there's this sort of period of adjustment and change, and then you sort of reopen the doors mm-hmm. in this new way. So can you tell us about how you arrived at uh, a new sort of rebranding, but that also kept the heart and soul of what it, it already was in the community? I think... Uh... There's a lot to that. Um, Dr. Hutton and, and, and Sandy Gross, John and Sandy, they did, the work we're doing now was always um, in their heart and, a, mm-hmm. and, and was part of the Blue Manatee. Yeah. Um, and we kind of just picked up that ball that they you know, were already playing with and ran with it. Um, and so to that point, it's, there was already this kind of groundwork that was put down for us, um, and Dr. Hutton is, you know, still someone that w- I would turn to and say, you know, this is what we're trying to do. Um, he lives and breathes literacy every day at Children's, so at uh, Ch- Cincinnati Children's. So he's a great resource. I-, I would say we are still facing that challenge of getting the word out. When you're a children's bookstore for 30 years, yes. it's very hard to get people um, to recognize you as anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are still very focused in the store and obviously outside of the store on children. Um, but we sell books for everybody. And uh, the bookstore carries books for all ages. And um, so we're still overcoming that and and um i think it will be a a journey (laughs) i don't think it'll it'll be an easy thing to overcome um there were pros and cons to keeping the name you know we wanted it's such a uh, recognizable logo and name and you don't want to give that up but at the same time it does create a little barrier to Flipping that switch. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So what does the next year hold for Blue Manatee? Oh, goodness. There is no telling. <laughs> um, hopefully more of what we had last year. A uh, lot of events, a lot of events inside the store, a lot of events outside the store, but more importantly, just um, more mana tanks, more literacy programs. You know, we've we've started three different literacy programs um, that are, uh, you know, Euler's a great a great school that. Um, yes, they're yes. so open. Some of my to, dissertation <laughs> research was in. Oh my gosh, Euler School, Laura Price Hill, because I so some of my research was around urban Appalachian identity oh. and certain city policies that would support or neglect that community. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they're just so welcoming to we show up with an idea and um they're like, "Well, maybe not, but we can try it, try it this way." They they've been very beneficial in helping us structure um the different programs and now they're starting to, you know, those programs are starting to branch out and and reach more children. Um 
So I would say, you know, those are our top priorities. How many children do we get to, you know, help this year? Um, and and everything else is just making that happen, yes. making that work happen. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you maybe what might feel like a strange question? Okay. What advice would you give to innovators, other founders, whether that's at the startup level or even people who are responsible for innovating inside of big companies? What what advice do you have for them? What what perspective can you lend them when it comes to thinking about how to reach someone with story at a, an emotional and a, a social mission level? I think you have to look inward first. What would speak to you? What moves you? Um, you know, it's two different things. If you're doing something that you're passionate about and that you're starting, it's much easier to tell that story and to create what your story is going to be. Um, when you're inside of a big corporation and you've got their boundaries around you and you're working on their project, it can be more difficult to find that that story. How, how are we going to reach the public? How are we going to reach our consumer? Um, but I think if you can take a, a moment and, and look inside and say, okay, I am the consumer. Um, I'm not necessarily just this employee, right? I, and and find out like what would connect me to this. I think that's the the best thing to do. One of our clients, this re- it reminds me, one of our clients from last year is forming a startup around the idea of bringing your soul with you to work. I and love that. I do too. I think uh, there's actually sort of a, a cultural narrative forming, um, perhaps not just in Cincinnati, but I hear it in our city, which is I was in a big corporate mm-hmm. and uh, my soul went away. <laughs> <That's> so <me. laughs> I left, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I left in order to pursue my my other passions. And, and those individuals, often the story is, okay, so I founded a startup or a consulting company or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but it'd be interesting to see how we can k- keep trying to, e- even how large companies can continue to remember to put the soul and put empathy into Absolutely. all that we yes. do and to bring our employees, uh, allow them to bring their lives and their passions with them to work. Well, I, I, I spent 12 years in finance and I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I knew that I was dying inside being there like I didn't belong in the culture I didn't fit in that culture um it was not enjoyable to get up and go to work every day um and so I quit but I didn't know what my next step was going to be I was living in San Francisco um I worked for a wonderful company I made a great paycheck and it just you get to that point where it's like, I I cannot get out of this bed and go to that place again. Um, And I, you know, I have two young daughters and I continually try to instill in them, like, you can do whatever it is you want to do. Just make sure it's something that feeds your soul because, you know, you're young and you feel like you have this whole great big life in front of you, but you reach a certain age and you realize, dang, it's a short amount of time we have to be on this planet. (laughs) And, (laughs) and making sure you spend, you know, this is the place you spend the majority of your time. Why be somewhere that sucks? (laughs) You know, like, I don't know how else to put it, but even if you don't make the biggest paycheck or, or, you know, it, you're not driving the best car, living in the biggest house. It's so much better to put your head on your pillow at night and be like, and smile. And and to know you, you did something that day that whether it impacted other people or just yourself, it, it made a difference. Um, and, and I mean, not to put so much um, business overlay on top of this point, but consumers are are expecting that more mm-hmm. and more now. We not only want to bring our souls with us to work, but we also expect that the companies and the brands that we will love and cherish will have, uh, will allow us to bring our souls with us to the things that we buy Absolutely. so that there's transparency yes. around where it's coming from. Was it ethically sourced? Is it healthy? Uh, what are the long-term impacts on the environment? And how does this, you know, is it evidence-based? We could go super deep here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it, like, yeah. it affects everything. Everything yeah. around us, yeah. and 
Um, I, I, I used to uh, not make fun of, but kind of like, what the heck, what the, the test. My friends would go to some corporations to do interviews and they say we had to take a personality test and we had to do this and and I'm like well that's weird like why would you have to do a person like they're going to interview you they're going to talk to you right and and it's not till I got older and and this point in my life that I'm like really people were touching on this way back when you know (laughs) like there's a reason for that we don't if you love what you're doing if you're at all passionate about what you're doing day in and day out at work you're going to be a better employee you're going to be more productive and and efficient and if you've got you know a bunch of people with sad mugs on all day and you know just sitting at their desk waiting for the moments to tick by um you're not getting you don't have the best workforce right yes so true i think it's encouraging that uh, from a regional and economic development perspective, we see more cities supporting innovation mm-hmm. and in, in all of its forms, not only in the sort of scalable, investable tech world, but also in creative and lifestyle businesses, too, that they, we're seeing that this is a trend and people want to carry their passion around. Mm-hmm. So trying to create systems that support that and grant opportunities that support that yes. and uh, entrepreneurial hubs, startup hubs that uh, provide an affordable place for people to collaborate and work remotely and these are things I know that for me, as I was trying to start a creative consulting firm, getting that off the ground, mm-hmm. I needed those systems in place to do that successfully without sure. being destitute in the very <laughs> Right, <laughs> exactly, without like yeah. sinking yourself into debt. Right, right, yeah. It's, yeah. And it, it's nice because you don't have this whole us and them kind of mentality anymore. Like it used to be, oh, the entrepreneurial lifestyle, oh, the corporate lifestyle, and, you know, never the two shall meet. Um but that's not true anymore. Yeah. You know, you, you've got uh, you know Kroger and P and G doing these great in-house yes. um, think tanks and 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 being open to pilots with startups, yeah, too. Yeah. Because I I think that's where Cincinnati has seen the most incredible growth in the amount of venture capital coming into the region and the mm-hmm. amount of. Uh, support for the startup ecosystem has come in s- to some large degree from the big co's in our region saying, oh, yeah. yes, we know we need to embrace disruption by collaborating with startups versus uh, getting disrupted. Right. Yeah. I mean, Centrifuge has built quite, you know, yes. a presence based on that. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I think it's what makes Cincinnati stand out in a very, um, noisy, crowded, um, and media, right? Like, so you have yeah. the, so many stories every day, media stories and coverage on, on startup life and, uh, innovation and all this. And you, there are these articles that keep popping up about, you know, what's happening over here in Cincinnati. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, can't even fly there direct. Uh, <laughs> it's you know it's, it's it's it is strange, but I think that's what makes the difference. Is these key people came in and were like, we can do something different here, and have just worked at it and kept building that network of people. And um, you know, our size is is substantial now. And and when you've got the universities and your corporations plus your little tiny, you know, just getting started students out of out of school, all working together. That's something impressive to talk about. I love that we're ending on this note of the importance of community and collective <laughs> identity because it's where we started. <laughs> so um, where can people find out more about the Blue Manatee Literacy Project? BlueManatee.org. Awesome. And you can follow them on social media at Blue Manatee Books. Um, Amanda, and your ad handle is Amanda Cranius. Yes. Perfect. So, Amanda, I'm so grateful for this conversation. It's it's really inspiring uh, to hear how you have pivoted a few different <laughs> times in your career and uh, ultimately ended up embracing a, a one-for-one social impact mission now. Very cool. Thanks Thank so you. much for Thanks being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on social media and add your voice to the conversation. You can find us at Untold Content. Untold Content.